the rest of the story. January 22, 1906, singer-dancer Bessie Dilks opened at the Family Theater, Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Family Theater. The establishment was a so-called high-class vaudeville house. And to emphasize the high class, reviewers often cited, quote, ladies present, many accompanied by their husbands. Well, anyway, Bessie Dilks was already a vaudeville veteran, but a pair of brand newcomers appeared on the same bill that night, a novelty act, the Austerlitz duo. Watching them rehearse, Bessie was not particularly impressed, and still they seemed to be such nice folks. And then not quite an hour before showtime, Mr. Austerlitz ran up to Bessie backstage and said, We are in big trouble. He said, My partner is very ill, too ill to go on. Well, in vaudeville, that meant only one thing. They would not be paid. We're as poor as church mice, was the way he put it, adding that he could not even afford a decent pair of breeches in which to perform. Bessie knew what was coming next. Would she substitute for the young man's partner? Indeed, that was precisely what Mr. Austerlitz had in mind. Bessie had the young lady's look, was even about the same height. Having seen their routine, she remembered enough of it to fake the rest, and the show began. First act on the bill was the lorry trio, pantomime, acrobatics, something to warm up the audience. Bessie and Mr. Austerlitz were next. Elaborate musical toe dance was how the act was described on the program. But my, how that young couple did dance as though they had rehearsed for days, maybe all of their lives. Notices in the newspaper the next day were more than favorable. In fact, reviewers did not even realize that the young man's partner was Bessie Dilks, the same sparkling and talented Bessie Dilks, who two acts later performed her own musical comedy number. And Bessie continued performing for many years before marrying and rearing a family, but she never forgot that winter night in 1906, the occasional recollection of which would delight her children and her children's children. For meanwhile, that young man with whom she had danced became famous, along with the partner who was sick that night. The partner was his sister Adele. So yes, I do mean to say that Frederick Austerlitz a vaudeville performer once so poor he couldn't even afford new pants changed his name to the name that would set Broadway ablaze in lights, Fred Astaire. And by the way, Bessie Dilks, the vaudeville veteran who had been singing and dancing in her parents' musical comedy act since she could toddle onto the stage, was then, the night she danced in Adele's shoes, was then not quite ten. And Adele herself was not even nine. And Fred, who gave Bessie Dilks her most exciting show business memory, the famous star of stage and screen whom posterity would hail as the greatest dancer in American history, he, Fred Astaire, was then only six years young. Light-hearted, that's how we're inclined to characterize the vaudevillians' era on reflection. We sometimes forget that they, away from the footlights, were just plain poor with nothing but an unquenchable determination to be something more. That is the rest of the story. <laughs>